Now that we have seen how the threads work and what properties they have, let us look at what are the different ways of creating a thread. Two ways of creating a thread, one is extending from thread class and two implementing runnable interface. So, either you can select to extend from the thread class or implementing runnable interface. Now, let us look at the steps to executing both the methods and see what is the difference between both of these methods. After that, we will take a look at an example using each of these methods. Method 1, extending by the thread class. First step is extend a class from the thread class override the run method then create an instance of the above class and start the thread. In the second method that is implementing the runnable interface, first thing that you do is of course implement runnable on a class this runnable interface has only one single method that's the run method so implement the run method of the runnable interface, create an instance of the class then what you have done here is when you created an instance of a class of the above class this class is implementing the runnable interface. So, when you create an instance of the class implementing the runnable interface, what type of an object do you get? You get a runnable object. But here, when you created an instance of the above class, in the first method, the class for which you are creating an instance is extending a thread class. So, this instance which you are creating is nothing but a thread object. So, here you just have a runnable object you need to create a thread object. Create a thread object by passing the runnable object as parameter. So, when you create a thread object, the first parameter that you need to pass is the runnable object which is nothing but the instance that you created in step C. By passing the runnable object you created a mapping between the thread and its runnable object and then call start on the thread.
Now let's see what's happening here. You take a class extend from the thread class. You are overriding the run method which has been written in the thread class. The run method out here and the run method out here are the same. What the thread class is doing actually is the thread class implements the runnable interface and it implements the run method of the runnable interface as a do nothing method. So, you override that run method to give a implementation for the thread. Remember the run method is where you give the entire implementation of the thread or the functionality of the thread. And you create an instance of the class you get a runnable ob sorry you get a thread object here since you are extending from thread. So, on the thread object you just invoke the start function start method. The start method in turn we said calls the run method thereby getting the thread into a runnable mode. Now, in this particular case second method you take a class implementing the runnable interface override the run method of the runnable interface where you define the functionality of the thread you create an instance of the class so you get a runnable object you still need to create a thread object and then call the start on the thread while creating a thread object if you do not pass the runnable object as parameter and if you were to call start on the thread the start will automatically call the run on the thread for the runnable upon the runnable object thread itself is also a runnable object so if you are not passing any runnable object as parameter it itself is a runnable object so it will call run method on itself. Therefore, the run method of the thread class itself gets executed which does what nothing because it is a do nothing method it just gets in gets out of the method. That is why we need to provide the runnable object as a parameter here. So, when the start method calls the run it calls the run on the runnable object that you provided. Now, the question would be why should I call start method can I just call the run method directly I am overriding the run method of the thread or the runnable interface why should I call start and start in turn call the run method can I not directly call the run method myself instead of calling start here I will say call run method on the thread there is nothing wrong but then it is not a separate execution of thread it is in the current thread itself it is like calling another method that is all if you end up calling the run method. But if you call a start and start calls a run the start what it does is it takes the thread on which you have called the start on and it schedules it with the CPU. So, that it gets to execute as a separate path of execution and not within the same thread which where you created this particular thread object that is why we need to call start method and not the run method directly. So, these are the two methods or two ways of creating threads. Now, let us take a look at an example. 